Hi, everyone. Welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell, and our guest today is Vidi Sala. Vidi is bringing Bollywood to Brattleboro. She's the host of Vidi's Bollywood Jukebox on our local radio station, WVEW, which streams internationally. As an independent cultural arts curator, Vidi collaborates with many different local venues to present Bollywood films, which always include a sweet dose of Indian history, culture, handcrafts, and cuisine with each showing. Born and raised in Mumbai, India, Vidi came to Brattleboro five years ago. She's with us today, and we're really glad to have her. Hi, Vidi. Hi, Wendy. It's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much. You've had a busy summer and a busy fall. <laughs> yes. And doing many different things. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Mostly around <laughs> cinema. Yes. 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 Which, which has been your focus of bringing Bollywood to Brattleboro. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's been an exciting journey since last summer when I started doing in-person events in Brattleboro. Yeah. And uh, it started uh, technically much before that in 2020 when I collaborated with Epsilon Spires and Jamie Moore, the amazing, amazing artist behind all of the work at Epsilon Spires was uh, all about uh, bringing Indian films to local audiences here in Brattleboro. And uh, we started an online film club where we had people watch the films on the website and invited them to participate in a discussion about the film, the characters, their background. So that was uh, a really exciting uh, start that culminated into these in-person events. Yeah. You just rolled it right into doing it in person after yeah. that. And those, the, when you were doing it by Zoom, uh, so it was, it was sort of worldwide, is that yeah. right? Yeah, it was worldwide, and we had participants uh, joining the Zoom session from UK and different parts of India because people were all holed up. So Delhi, Lucknow, Mumbai City, all these people, all these participants and their different perspectives was so interesting to bring together. From that, you got a grant through the, um, through the, the Arts Council of Wyndham County to continue with the, the uh, film series, is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Um, basically what the grant helped do was that we, with Epsilon Spires, we were able to host one screening for free for all the audiences uh -huh. in which we were able to invite uh, Sheetal's Vegetarian Cuisine. They uh, have uh, a farmer's market stall every Saturday at the Brattleboro Farmers Market and they make amazing. Sheetal is the woman behind the food and she makes amazing food. So we were able to bring them in yes. and just open up the space uh, of Backlot Cinema for uh -huh. people to just come and enjoy uh -huh. this film together. Yes, so the grant was very helpful in yes. that way. It was, yes, it was really and helpful. You're also establishing something, and I know Epsilon Spires is focusing on this a lot, is establishing a new way of viewing art, um, film and cinema, and uh, music, uh, mm -hmm. and different things like that. So hopefully this will continue on. Yes. Right? Of course, after some point, people got tired of Zoom, which right? is why. And uh, in-person events, were people were deprived of them for such a long time. Right. So this, uh, this whole feeling of coming together to watch a film, that room full of laughter on a funny scene is mm -hmm. something that I missed and I enjoyed it so much when it happened the yes. first time at the Stone Church. That was the, that was the first in-person event. So it's Stone Church, which is a beautiful venue here yes. in town. And Robin Johnson, I think you collaborated with him pretty closely yeah, on that yeah. as well. And then you kind of rolled that into the back lot at Epsilon Spires mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. outside viewing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was another great idea, is to have sort of drive-in movies, walk-in movies. Yeah, walk-in <laughs> movies. That was all Jamie. She's such was a great it? curator. Yeah. So after this wonderful summer of showing these films, you got a nice little gig at the Latches showing as well with John Potter uh, collaborating with him. That's been a great a culmination of uh, all these movie events uh, reaching 
an actual movie theater, yes. the Latches, and the only one in Brattleboro. The historic Latches Theater is such a beautiful space. And John Potter has been an excellent collaborator. Mm -hmm. The first film that we showed was in the old theater. Yeah. And that film is, uh, uh, is a very important historic film for Indian cinema. So it was really special to see it in uh, alongside all the Greek sculptures oh. in, inside the latches. <laughs> and uh, that's the first time I learned from John that uh, a Greek family had bought the theater way back in uh, the 1900s. And uh, that was around the time when cinema was growing. So it was a clever decision on the part of the family. Yes. And uh, it has its own history. And to show a film that was such an important mm. part of Indian history mm -hmm. was a very special experience mm -hmm. for me. And of course, uh, the other films that I curated as part of the series were uh, enjoyable because they were all uh, from different time periods. One was an urban film, there was a comedy film. So yes. that was a nice way to engage with local audiences. Bollywood, the name, it conjures up certain images for people mm -hmm. that there is song and dance, that uh, it's like a musical, but uh, is there a story? Do the actors actually sing or is it playback singers oh. that record at a studio and actors lip sync on stage. Uh -huh. So these are all the elements that uh, I introduce people to. And then examining why the character or where the character is coming from. For example, a film that I showed at the Latches, uh, a 2012 film called English Winglish, mm -hmm. was about this uh, homemaker who doesn't speak fluent English, English but she's a great entrepreneur. And uh, she just constantly feels uh, let down and underconfident because she can't speak English. And the background of that is that uh, urban India is obsessed with uh, fluency in spoken English. Huh. And that is a result of our previous colonization and the way that the British made it so important for the people of India to learn how to speak English or to make it sound like this elite language that everyone should know yeah. and uh, everyone should know it more than their own mother tongue uh -huh. is something that uh, became ingrained during our colonization and it continues in urban India. So that is something that I was making it a part of my introduction to yeah. inform the audiences that why is, uh, why is it such a big deal? Yes. Why such an emotional reaction on the part of the character to this? Mm -hmm. Because of this conditioning. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just really great because, you know, I think that um, uh, looking bad, back at our own cinematic history, you know, it, movies spring out of all kinds of cultural things. Right. You know, but for us, you're right. We have certain preconceived notions of what Bollywood is and what it's about. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure that having you there to, to give some some real real information is wonderful. Yeah, and I, I am personally enjoying the process because yeah. I've spent such a long time researching and writing about Indian cinema, mm -hmm. and to be able to share that knowledge, but also look at it from the prism of culture. Yeah. and present it to an audience that has never encountered an Indian film before right. is, is the focus of my endeavor overall. Yes. I still have audiences coming up to me and sharing their experiences yes. or, you know, like this one gentleman after the same film, he shared how he made friends with someone from South Korea before because of their language barrier. Mm, mm -hmm. So uh, that is something that I want to bring out through these events. Like I said, watching something together is such a different experience because he wouldn't have come up and shared that with me if he was watching it at home. That's right. On a streaming platform. That's right. Because um, you are bringing many things to these pres presentations, uh, you're bringing samples of food for one thing, mm -hmm. and handcrafts, and it feels like you're really trying to create a different kind of experience for film goers. Yes, yes, it's it's all part of 
uh, the curation and uh, I want people to not just come and watch a movie but also engage with the Indian culture yeah. in a more a wholesome way you mm -hmm. know touch and feel handicrafts mm -hmm. that are made in india and not picked up from some wholesale mart from right. some you know international uh, shopping destination yeah. it's from this weaving colony that was in fact shut down during the british colonization because they wanted to monopolize it uh -huh. so then it uh, it got revived and somehow i am connected with those weavers and i bring those uh, shawls, the yes. silver jewelry is yeah. from my family store in Mumbai. Uh -huh. So it's all part of the authentic cultural experience that I want people to have. It's not hogwash. It, it's not, uh, you know, that, okay, I'm presenting a piece of India to you. This is the way it is. This is That's what, right. you know, you get on in the bazaars of Mumbai that I'm uh, having like a small bazaar of my own <laughs> at uh, the movie event. I want to go back to a few of the things that you mentioned. One is that um, a lot of the handcrafts that you're bringing to these things are made by your family, the jewelry part of it. And so growing up, you grew up in a family of jewelers. Yes, that is correct. Uh, my father is a seventh generation goldsmith. Oh. And uh, he, he spent most of his youth making gold jewelry by himself. And then he set up a factory where he had craftsmen make his designs that he would create on paper. Mm -hmm. And they would make that in gold. And so uh, he has a ton of experience. And now uh, he has switched that into retail and uh, uh, silver jewelry is uh, is a big focus in India right now and so he commissions all these jewelry pieces that are made in the family factory and uh, they are also at the family store which is in Mumbai. Oh, it is. Yeah. <clears throat> and you go back to Mumbai. Yes. yes. I go back uh, every winter for a couple of months. So smart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah. you have family there and you're also able to do your radio show when you're back in Mumbai. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that, that was something incredible about uh, the radio station, the local radio station and also how uh, remote programming is, uh, is a possibility now. And I was able to continue hosting my show from Mumbai mm -hmm. and uh, it's broadcast in Brattleboro every week. Yes. Just as it is here. I encourage people um, who, are, who are viewing to visit Vidhi's website called Vidhiism. <laughs> and uh, you'll see all the various things that she's doing, many of which we're talking about today. But can you talk about that a little bit, Vidhi, getting, um, bringing together all of these different things that you wanted to bring to, the, uh, to your audience? Um, because it's, you've got uh, the handcraft, the cuisine, the radio, the podcasts. <laughs> You're also um, emceeing a bit, uh, and of course the, the film club. So yes, uh, I'm doing these movie events. I do a radio show, which is educational. I also have a podcast where I try to share uh, whatever articles or uh, interviews that I have. Yeah with uh, some of them are with the uh, Indian celebrities mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, that's a real treat for a lot of people because these are exclusive uh, yes. interviews. Yes. Yeah, and so when you um, got to Brattleboro, uh, it feels like this bloomed for you, having the videoism that you're talking about. Yeah, so can you talk a little bit about that? About coming to Brattleboro? Yeah, about time? how that happened. You, you've created kind of a, a, a whole nice little world of yeah. things you're doing. <laughs> Yeah, so it started with the radio mm -hmm. that um, my husband, he grew up here mm -hmm. and uh, he knew about the local radio station and when we were dating, he knew of my love for uh, Bollywood songs and sometimes if I was sharing my playlist with him, I would be sharing information about that specific film or mm -hmm. the track or the singer. And so when I came to Brattleboro, 
for the first time he thought it it will be a good idea for me to have my own show and at that time it was just something to do while yeah. i was here and something interesting to do but uh, as i started hosting my show i realized i had a lot of information to share i came up with a theme every week a different theme mm -hmm. to explore and that's how i was able to share what indian music is about right. what are the international influences for example that have affected indian music like we've also had a whole uh, funk and retro phase mm -hmm. in the 70s mm -hmm. a disco phase in the 80s mm -hmm. and uh, big band swing which was such a thing in the 50s so bollywood has uh, uh, has represented all of those oh. uh, influences yes. very uh, very close to the originals and of course then making it indian making it their right. own making it more appealing to yes. the people yeah. so all of this i was able to explore through my radio show and uh, the response that i received from the local community from all the listeners was encouraging and uh, now it has evolved into this uh, curation yes and i can see how um coming to america gave you a perspective on all this right yeah far away from home and realizing oh yes <laughs> this is moving right along with this culture in yeah. in different kinds of ways so you met your husband in india he's from brattleboro but you met him in india what's yeah. what's that story <laughs> that's uh, that's a very interesting story um so yeah he grew up in vermont and uh until i met him i had not heard about vermont as a state or mm -hmm. what uh, what it's like we met in the south of india in a little uh, town called pondicherry mm -hmm. where i was uh, managing a heritage hotel and uh, he was uh, he still is an indian classical musician and he was touring at the time performing mm -hmm. at these boutique places mm -hmm. and so he came to play a concert at the hotel that i was managing and uh, at first i thought he's just one of these people coming from uh, the western part of the world trying to play around with the indian music but when he played the concert i i saw that he is uh, he's playing from the tradition he's steeped uh, in the culture uh -huh. and that's when i found out that he had been traveling to india since uh, 12 years Wow. up to that point uh -huh. so right from his college days he had been going to india to learn the music and then later when he was trained enough to perform it and uh, present it at concert halls all over india in different cities and also in europe it was really just a chance encounter it it was had, a chance yeah, encounter yeah. and uh, i mean the way i landed that job was also a chance uh -huh. so i think it was that year when it was a series of these coincidences that uh, were sort of uh, coming to this point where i would be in vermont yeah. one day <laughs> did you ever think of coming to america before that no never uh, never aha uh -huh. and uh, yeah it's surprising because uh, i have been a travel journalist i used to be a travel writer mm -hmm. and i have traveled to uh, about 7 countries so but uh, america had somehow never featured because it's so far away from india right. and uh, i had heard stories about it from people who have visited or people who have family but i had never thought of coming here And here you are. Here I am. Here you are. <laughs> As you said, you know, your family were many generational jewelers. Um what were the kinds of things you were interested in as a kid? Um a lot of uh, I was interested in a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of books. I remember growing up, but also we had I have a younger brother who's 2 years younger than me and we had a pretty uh I would say urban childhood. Yeah. outside of school we spent a lot of time cycling and roller skating because that was a thing in the 90s yeah and uh, i think two things shaped our childhood one was that uh, we went to the movies every weekend uh, uh -huh. our dad was uh, my dad is a uh, movie buff 
he grew up watching every single Bollywood film that released in the theaters. And so that was our recreation uh -huh. growing up in the city is uh, going to watch a film, uh -huh. um, whatever film is playing at the theater every weekend. And uh, it went to the point where if we had exams, then my dad would be like, you guys need to de-stress. Let's go watch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you got it early on. I got it early yeah. on. Yeah, that's right. That's wonderful. And uh, the other thing is traveling. We every summer vacation we would explore a different part of India uh, because it's so it's so vast yes. and there are so many places to see. That um, yeah, that is uh, also something that my dad was uh, uh, particular about. That we have to take a vacation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it uh, has to be something that we haven't seen before. Did you have extended family as well? Did you have uh, traditional celebrations? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, growing up in India, uh, traditional and extended family celebrations are a given. Plus, uh, in, in a metropolis like Mumbai, you live in a housing society which is like a microcosm of a community. Mm. It has apartment buildings and so everyone celebrates everything together, uh -huh. including Christmas. We used to have <laughs> Christmas celebrations also. Really? India is uh, so obsessed with uh, festivals that we'll, we'll take festivals of other cultures and <laughs> celebrate them if we are, as if we are short of uh -huh. festivals of our own. <laughs> Interesting, so just to have fun. <laughs> to just have fun, yeah. That's fabulous. <laughs> and so Mumbai being so huge, but it sounds like you kind of had neighborhoods. Yes. There are areas where, where it was a smaller kind of community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so it was a very urban experience, but yeah. again with the travel, uh, we got to see so many other parts yeah. of, uh, of the country yes. that uh, we otherwise wouldn't. In fact, I'm still surprised to this day that uh, when I was 12, I enrolled for this hike in the Himalayan region. It was like a 26 day wow. trek where uh, it, we were all a bunch of 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds and there were a set of instructors who had climbed the Everest. And so they would lead the entire group of 20, 25 kids and we would pitch our own tent at the end of the day mm -hmm. and we trekked along uh, up the Ganges, uh, up the Ganga. The Ganges is a very Western name for it. Uh -huh. But the Ganga River, we followed it uh, up into the mountains wherever it was, uh, up to the point where it was safe enough. So I think the highest altitude that we trekked to was about... Um, thousand uh, meters yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's still a good amount of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were you studying? What were the things that you were really interested in studying, whether it was in uh, grammar school or afterwards? I really loved uh, literature. Ah. And uh, I didn't know that until I went to college that uh, I loved I loved reading stories. Yeah. I loved reading uh, novels growing up. We grew up on a dose of Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys, Did just like really? an American uh. kid, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we also had our local uh, comic books, uh -huh. like the Amar Chitra Katha, which is, uh, which is like these local mythological heroes. So oh. we have our own comic books uh -huh. of that. Uh, uh, publication and uh, that was a big part of uh, growing up. Uh -huh. And then when I went to college, uh, I studied uh, the liberal arts and humanities and uh, in between the soci sociology, psychology and lit literature, I found that literature was the mm. subject that interested me the most. Mm -hmm. So I did my major in English literature and also did my masters. In English, in English literature. Yeah, interesting. So you were, were you, had you learned English as a young, as a child? Yes, literally from kindergarten, uh, we were taught in the English medium, and uh -huh. uh, uh, Mumbai especially has these schools that uh, are known as convent schools, mm -hmm. and they were established by the Christian missionaries, and uh, it, they are run by Indian people but uh, they are run by Indian Christian people uh. and uh, the medium of education is English and uh, all the parents of 
mm, our parents' generation were of the idea that uh, a good convent education is the best one for our children. Really? So that's the school that my brother and I went to. Aha. Uh -huh. And is that still true, do you think? It is. It is. is. It? Yeah. yeah. Every, I think that uh, it's a very aspirational thing that parents want to send their kids to English medium schools mm -hmm. because, like I said, it's a very important part of, uh, of just living in mm. a metropolis to speak English. Right. In an urban area. Yeah. yeah. You did have a career as an editor and a journalist and you wrote for the National Center for the Performing Arts. Yeah, that's in Mumbai. Good. In Mumbai. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting venue. It's one of the oldest performing arts venues mm -hmm. in Mumbai, and uh, they have uh, an internal publication that circulates among their members. And so it's like a preview for concerts that are coming up. And sometimes they do artist profiles, mm -hmm. and sometimes they do like a. Uh, give, to give a general idea of what to expect at the concert. Yeah. So I have been writing. I still write for the yes. magazine remotely when I'm here. Yeah. And uh, it has been uh, a rewarding experience mm -hmm. because that's how I have been able to connect with all these uh, personalities from Indian music and Indian right. cinema. Uh huh. And use that information into my curation. Yes, everything kind of works together, <laughs> yeah. it sounds like. Yeah, <laughs> all of the various things that you've done. Vidi, I know that you've also been called in to do some MC work or uh, introductory work. And um, I know you did a Planned Parenthood in Northern, Northern New England rally in Montpelier not so long ago. That, that also happened uh, by chance that uh, uh, Planned Parenthood invited me to MC a storytelling session right here in Brattleboro at oh. 118 Elliott. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did that on the recommendation of uh, my friend Peter Gould, who was uh, at that time a regular listener of my show. And he was of the opinion that uh, I would be a great MC for uh -huh. some reason. So they uh, got in touch with me and. Uh, I, I did what they needed me to introduce all the participants and speak a little bit about their initiative. So after that, they invited me to a number of rallies. And the most recent one was in um, July, I think, at, uh, at the Mon outside the Montpelier State House. Yes. And uh, that is where I introduced Bernie Sanders. And that was a pretty exciting <laughs> day. Yeah. Someone, um, uh, our family member in Vermont, uh, he said that uh, it's a very Vermont experience that you had. I was just going to say <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. Of all the things you've done, that is so Vermont. <laughs> it is, right? <laughs> I assume that this is on your website as well. You do have a newsletter, so people can stay in touch with you, and you can be in touch with them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love uh, reaching out to people and uh, the newsletter is on my website which is also vidism.com and there is a pop-up form or a form on the bottom of the page where people can mention yep. their names and email IDs and that's how I send notifications for Great. a new event that I'm having or if I've released a new yeah. Uh, article, mm -hmm. all of that I share That's on the so newsletter. Great. And you welcome collaboration, I know. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. That was wonderful. Thank you so yes, much, Wendy. We'll be keeping our eyes out for the next thing that you do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much for being with us today. We are so glad to have Vidi Sala with us and to hear about all the things that she's been doing, especially over these past six months or so. So stay tuned, uh, stay tuned to Vidi, find out what she's doing, check out her website. Stay tuned to Here We Are, we're a weekly show, we'll be back next time. <laughs>